Write it down and start making a plan. We're gonna discuss my laser eye surgery. It is painless. And team, leave them kids at home. But let me say this. Do your research. It's called balance, okay? So let's talk about teeth. Fixing my teeth, I just feel like it changed the game. Hi beautiful, welcome back. And if you're here for the first time, my name is Shay Nicole and I create videos to help elevate your confidence in self-care and style while also dropping gems for my current and aspiring content creators. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's get into today's agenda. Okay, so you may notice that the face is beat. Yes, ma'am. You know what that means. Today is another batch content day. I'm trying to tell y'all, batch shooting your content in advance is gonna save you so much time and stress. Cannot recommend it enough. But we are also gonna get into more of my postpartum glow up journey. Again, y'all, I am here to inspire you. Whether you're a mom or not, I want you to make that list. All of the things that you've been wanting to do, whether it's elevating your aesthetics, fixing things that are maybe mentally or spiritually emotionally like whatever it is it doesn't matter like for me it's, it's all of the above right I'm trying to elevate physically mentally emotionally all that but whatever it is for you write it down and start making a plan that is the point of this entire series and I'm excited to bring you part two so in part one we discussed hair micro shading my brows body and skincare it was a lot i did a lot we packed a whole bunch into number one and i feel like you know re-watching that vlog back i needed to condense a little bit so today we're only going to talk about two things because i find that if i'm trying to pack a whole bunch of tips and advice and just giving you my experience into one blog i can't really get into the nitty-gritty details especially when i was thinking about like the skincare part of that last vlog I feel like I couldn't really give y'all the gems I wanted to because I didn't want the vlog to be a whole three hours. So moving forward, I will maybe do vlogs that individually address one or two things at a time for the glow up journey so I can give you like again some more in-depth details and also um, you all can ask questions in the comments specifically about that topic or those one or two topics because again vlog number one we discussed a lot while also you know me moving around doing stuff because I'm always on the go so today aside from batch creating the content we're going to discuss my laser eye surgery because I no longer wear contacts or glasses and I'm also going to talk about oh teeth yes going to talk about teeth besides those two things um what else is on the agenda oh we're having a girls night sidebar it is so important to me y'all know about community like how i feel about my community and just my friends my family but getting out the house okay because y'all know i am team leave them kids at home having mom guilt can sometimes shelter you from stepping outside and doing things even if it's just like a quick brunch or catching up with a friend over coffee or just you know something real slight a lot of times mom guilt just kind of takes over and we end up staying in the house for weeks months a whole year we cannot have that so I'm going out with the girls for a much needed day out slash night because I feel like it's going to turn into a night out. Um, so that's going to be the last thing on the agenda today. And I'm just really excited. Like, I'm feeling good. It's the kickoff to my weekend. I don't know, you know, if you're watching this during the week or weekend, but I hope this inspires you to A, put some stuff on your maintenance list, okay? Because that's the theme here with this series. But also, make some time to go outside. But let me say this. I know that sometimes outside can be a little scary because it'd be a lot going on. So be responsible when you, you know, choosing the places to go. Do your research. I don't want you to end up somewhere ratchet or somewhere unsafe, okay? I'm also very much team stay in the house. Let me say this. <laughs> if you don't know, I am slowly but surely turning into a bit of a homebody, but not because of my mom guilt. That's the difference. Like if I'm going to stay at home, sometimes I'll have my mom come pick up Gigi or we'll plan like, uh, a night where we put her down Jeremiah and I and then we go into the living room have a little date night We'll order our favorite food and spread it out and have like a little picnic in the living room and turn on a good movie Or one of our shows we want to catch up on, you know There's different days to keep that excitement in your life So I just want to preface by saying we don't have to go out like you can have a little ladies night in but today We're going outside. Okay. We, it's called balance. Okay. Anyways, let's get into this next part of my postpartum glow up journey Let's talk all about LASIK because baby, I was a blind baddie. Glasses since what, third grade? Then I started wearing contacts in sixth grade. Like 
I'm old school. For my elder millennials out there, I was born in 89. I'm not really an 80s baby though because I was born in December of 89. So like that's the very end. I feel like I'm still a 90s baby. But anyway, when I started wearing contacts, y'all, it was when the contacts were like hard. You know how they're like soft lens now, but no. It was back in the day when the contact had a little weight to it, okay? So I used to hate popping them in. Oh my gosh, my vision was so bad. Like I was nearsighted, meaning I could not see far away. And I was really involved in like sports. Like I played soccer in elementary school and then I got into cheerleading and dance, fun fact. So wearing glasses just, it, it, it wasn't going right, all right? Like, and I sweat a lot. I've always been like a sweaty kid. So my glasses would be like hanging down my nose. I keep pushing them up. It, it was a lot. So eventually I started wearing contacts, but I hated it, y'all. I used to have to get up at the crack of dawn early in the morning before school just to brace myself to have to touch my eyeball. I was so squeamish. And again, this was like sixth grade, seventh grade. So it took me some time to get used to it. But then after a while, baby, <laughs> I was an expert, okay? I mean, going into high school, I was driving because I, I had a car at 16. That's when I got my license. And baby, I remember popping them things in and out. Like, my friends used to be like, oh my God, you touch your eye? And I'm like, yes, I touch my eyeball because I've been wearing contacts since I was in the sixth grade. But anyway, I have been a blind baddie. And I'm so sorry. I don't want to make that offensive. I, whew, let me rephrase that because I was not technically blind, all right? I could see, but... I could not see that well when it comes to looking at things from a distance, okay? It was pretty bad. Like, my vision was getting worse and worse. And then, I don't know if you already know this, but pregnancy child, I've, I've said this before, but if you're new here, pregnancy takes a toll on your body. I've had several friends that have talked about vision changes. Another thing nobody warns you about with pregnancy. So for me, I knew that coming out of my pregnancy, I was gonna get LASIK. I always wanted LASIK, but it wasn't until I got pregnant when I realized, yo, I really need to sit down and make a mommy maintenance list. That was just something that I was very, very adamant about. The mommy maintenance list, which used to be called a bad B maintenance list, but try not to curse on here, so I changed it to mommy maintenance list. This was a list of all the things that I wanted to do for myself, whether it was cosmetically, you know, for aesthetic purposes, or just improving my lifestyle. And I'm trying to tell y'all, laser eye surgery changed the game for me. Going from third grade to adulthood, wearing glasses and contacts, to now I can just, get up and go what <laughs> what i should have been did this but i was scared i was scared because of that laser like the thought of having a laser on my eye how what is it gonna hurt is it hot is it i had all these questions but y'all i'm here to tell you it is painless it took all of maybe seven minutes i think yeah i think it was seven minutes because i asked the nurse to time it it again cannot recommend this enough you need to get lasik now there are some stipulations because everybody's not qualified, so let's talk about that. Okay, I pulled up the LASIK Institute website here because I wanna make sure I'm giving you all good talking points based on the facts they're giving, okay? <laughs> not just my personal experience, but they have like a profile of, you know, what makes a good LASIK candidate because again, everyone cannot get LASIK. So, number one, you have to be at least 18 years or older. And they say that's because you're still growing, your eyesight may change. As you're growing and going through puberty, there are gonna be hormonal changes that can affect your eye and vision, so you have to be at least 18. Number two, you have to have a stable vision prescription. So even if you're over the age of 18, your prescription may still be changing, which is what happened to me. Throughout my 20s, my eyesight got progressively worse, okay? I had to get a stronger prescription. I felt like every time I got new glasses. So that's one of the conditions here. And it says that they recommend that you've had the same prescription for at least two years before getting the um, eye surgery. And number three, it says you have to be in overall good health. So that's just kind of common sense. You know, anytime you're getting a procedure done medically, whether it's you know a cosmetic procedure or something that is super you know necessary for you. Thank God with this, you don't need any anesthesia or anything. It's just an eye drop, but we'll talk about that. Um, but there are some conditions they're saying here that could prohibit you from being a good candidate, like if you have um, glaucoma or cataracts or um, just other eye conditions. And again, they're gonna go over all this with you when you do your uh, consultation. And it's a free consultation too, so there's that. Um, number four, you cannot have dry eyes. So recovering from LASIK, it says it could be uh, difficult if you have dry eye syndrome or a history of dry eye or if you're prone to dry eye. What you think is dry eye may be different from what they would diagnose as dry eye. So again, make sure you are listening to them during the consultation because you may think you have dry eye, but girls, really you just need to stay hydrated. You know what I'm saying? So again, let the professionals tell you if you're a good candidate or not. And then number five, it says your prescription is within certain limits. So 
Uh, it says there are limits to how much LASIK can correct your vision. LASIK tends to be for individuals who are nearsighted and that that was me. I couldn't see far away. Um, but it also does work for patients that are fair sighted with a slight astigmatism as well. So then it goes into like what it can correct, which is like negative 11 diopters. It, just, it goes into like the prescription specifics, which I'm not going to get into. But again, let them tell you. And then number six, there's other factors. And this is something I found very interesting because my best friend, shout out to Jasmine, she went to get LASIK as well. And during her consultation, they told her that she wasn't eligible because of this issue. Now, they will measure the thickness of your cornea. Fun fact. And it says here, if your cornea isn't thick enough, uh, the surgeon can't make the corneal flat. Oh, I'm gonna try my best to explain this, but the laser kind of like penetrates, it, it makes a flap um, in your cornea. And the way he explained it to me, the, the surgeon before he did it, he like picks up your, well the flap of your cornea and the laser goes to work. I don't know, you, you Google it, cause I don't wanna say the wrong thing, but Long story short, when Jasmine went for her consultation, they told her she was not a candidate. So she had to get a different procedure. So we both got our vision corrected. But we went two totally different routes. So with LASIK, again, seven minutes in out, I was good. I could see perfectly immediately. Like as soon as I got off the table, I could see fine. But with her, she got something called PRK. The difference between LASIK and PRK, they're both uh, forms of laser. And I'm reading this so I can make sure I explain it correctly they're both forms of laser corneal surgery but prk which is what my best friend got it requires the surgeon to remove surface cells of the cornea and lasik which is what i got creates a small flap remember i told you he like lifted it up a small flap on the cornea to grant access to the underlying tissue and then it goes on to say that they're, they're prepped the same like i got numbing drops she got numbing drops so you can't feel anything again it is painless i promise you the only thing you can feel is like the pressure of the laser if that makes sense like i feel like somebody was like pressing on my eye but my eye was open like i could see everything the entire time it, it's really weird when you think about it because <laughs> your eye is open but you can't feel anything except for pressure and it's a laser coming to you but then it kind of like blacks out it sounds bad, but I swear y'all, it took two seconds, it doesn't hurt. Well, not two seconds, but the preparation from start to finish took seven minutes. I believe that the laser was only on my eye for less than 10 seconds because they like count you down. It, it is really quick. You actually spend more time getting ready for the laser than you're actually under the laser, if that makes sense. Okay, anyway, back to this. So um, with, with PRK, and again, this is for those if you find out, for those of you who are gonna do the consultation, if you find out that your cornea is not thick enough for LASIK, PRK is the alternative. And um, it says the eye doctor will place the eye holder onto your eye, same thing will happen with LASIK. And then it will remove the outer layer of your cornea using a gentle brush. And then from there, the laser would then like reshapes your corneal tissue. And after that, you are placed with like a contact lens over the bandage, a bandage and a contact lens to like help it heal faster. But the difference is, I wanna highlight this. My best friend, she could not see perfectly immediately after. Her 2020 vision or uh, 2120 vision, it got better over time. So as she healed, her vision progressed. But for me, when I got LASIK, which is the same preparation, they numb your eye with the drops, and the doctor creates a small flap in the, it says epi epithelium? I don't know, Google it. <laughs> and um, it says the difference between PRK eye surgery versus LASIK is that unlike PRK, the epithelium remains intact during LASIK, and the flap is gently lifted. So it's like they lift the, the part of your eye. Um, the same laser that is used for PRK is utilized to reshape the corneal tissue under the flap and then the flap is then folded back into place and aligned precisely by the surgeon. So because of the way I got it done, I could see immediately y'all. Like as soon as I got up off that table, I had perfect vision without my glasses or contact. So again, when I set up, it was like I had my glasses on, but I didn't. I opened my eyes and I blinked a couple times. It was a little blurry at first and everything was perfectly clear and even now I can see perfectly clear with no glasses no contacts and it's been two years oh I can't believe it's been two years wow again I'm fine I see great if you're wondering like does it last yes um and then again I could see immediately when my best friend got it done she could not I think she said it took a couple of weeks for her vision to kick in where she can see perfectly but we both got the same result 
her healing process was just a little bit longer. And then I didn't need to wear a contact lens or anything. I just had the goggles, as you can see here on the screen, I had like the glasses. And that's just for protection, um, to make sure you're not hitting your eye on accident because that's another thing you have to remember because they picked up the flap of the eye with a little tool um, before the laser could hit it. Uh, when the flap goes back down, it has to heal. And I don't know the specific language for that. And although you can't feel it healing, you need to make sure that you're protecting it. So that's why I wore glasses uh, with the goggles they gave me. And then they instructed me to not get my eyes wet, you know, in the shower and stuff. Like make sure I wore my goggles for like three or four days. And again, make sure I'm not hitting my eye, like, you know, rubbing it or, or letting like anything touch it. I had to be very conscious of my eye area. And even after I got it done, I think for the first day they tell you like don't like sleep on it too bad. I think I kind of slept propped up. Um, but again, temporary adjustments for a lifetime. Okay, now I will say this. There is a chance that your eyes can start to revert. I think he said after 20, maybe 30 years. But if you think about just life in general, most of our elders start to wear glasses because obviously your vision is gonna change as you, you know, into your more mature years. So it didn't bother me that like, okay, maybe one day I'll need reading glasses because I feel like literally everybody in life needs reading glasses. You know what I'm saying? Like once they get in their 70s and 80s, you know, Lord willing, we live to see 90, 100 years old, we're probably gonna need some reading glasses. So I didn't get LASIK thinking that for the rest of my life, I will never wear glasses again. No, I got it for, you know, for the next 20, 30, hopefully 40, 50 years, I can see a, from a far distance and not have to wear glasses. I can wake up and not have to look for glasses or go pop in my contacts. That is a luxury. And y'all, again, I cannot recommend it enough. Please do a free consultation if you can. I went to the LASIK Institute here in Houston. I think there's only one, maybe two, but you know, the LASIK Institute is all over the country. You can literally go to the website, www.lasikvisioninstitute.com. And sometimes they have coupons on here. I actually did a partnership with them, but if I would have paid, I think it would have come up to, I remember they gave me like an itemized breakdown. I think it would have been like, I wanna say after the coupon that they would have added, cause there's like a coupon on their website, you get a thousand dollars off. It would have been like 3,400, 3,300. It wasn't expensive. But let me say this, it also is gonna depend on your vision. Like I don't think that everyone gets priced the same to my knowledge. Again, I did a partnership with them, but um, I know my best friend, you know, she got the PRK laser and then they did give me that itemized breakdown. But having perfect vision for 30, 40 years and not having to worry about buying contacts or getting new glasses, I think less than $4,000 is super worth it. Like, I don't know what it would be today for you because again, inflation, you know, the price of things be rising. But again, for me, if I would have paid and didn't do that partnership, it would have been, I believe, yeah, $3,400 around that ballpark. But that is an amazing investment. Again, if you wear glasses or contacts, you already know the inconvenience of having to make that appointment because sometimes you know if your vision has changed you can't just go buy contacts you need a prescription so you got to make the appointment you got to keep up with your contact refills you can't sleep in your contacts or you're not supposed to i know there's breathable ones out there but i try to make sure i didn't sleep in them too long i mean it's just a lot and i feel like again the point of me having this mommy maintenance list um this postpartum glow up journey that i'm on I wanted to do things that really helped me to just live a better quality of life. So getting perfect vision, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, it's going to make you just uh, feel 10 times better. Like waking up every day, you're going to feel like that girl. Like you're still going to be that girl, even if you have your glasses or contacts. But again, this is just going to elevate your life. Okay, so I need to go ahead and batch create. I think I'm going to come back. I'll do like every other like. I'll shoot a little bit, then come back and talk, shoot a little bit, come back and talk, just to give the vlog a balance. Let me know in the comments if you have questions about LASIK. I feel like I answered, like, does it hurt? Like, the basic question, does it hurt? What's the recovery? Could I see immediately after? How much does it cost? Um, I feel like that's the basic questions, but if I miss something or just something that you just want to know, you're curious about, drop a comment so I can answer. Y'all know I'll be in my comments. And again, I'll probably do more like individualized videos for each part of my journey. So you can expect, uh, you know, a full video about LASIK. Like I'll probably do maybe a two year post op or maybe wait in two and a half year post op, just all about LASIK. So you can watch that later. But I also did record when I got it done. So if you want to check that out, 
uh, go back. I'll put it on the screen so you can see what it looks like. Go back and watch that vlog because I did show the entire experience and that way you can see what everything was looking like from behind the scenes, okay? Now, let's shoot some content. I'm going to do, I got another box from Akira today. Shout out to Akira, my family over there. Love them down. They've been sending me, is this? Okay, I think that's vacay style, yeah. I've been doing like bridal style inspo. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check out my YouTube shorts or my Instagram reels. But I've been doing a series showing like different looks for the bride, whether you are going to your rehearsal dinner, um, bachelorette weekend, a party, engagement dinner, whatever. I've been doing inspo for that, but I've also been doing a vacation haul series because the girls are going on vacation, okay? So I'm trying to give y'all looks, looks that are a mix of high and low, luxury, affordable, bougie on a budget, all the things. And remember, when I show y'all stuff, whether it's in my YouTube shorts or Instagram reels, TikTok, wherever, you can shop, okay? You can shop these things. Look in the description box, go to my LTK. That's where I link everything, it's, unless it's Zara. Zara cannot be linked through LTK. I have a separate site for that. But remember, you can find it. If you really want, you will go through the link, okay? I always put all the details in my description box. Um, and again, you might as well just download the LTK app and follow me on there so you never miss when I upload a new look. All right, let's get into some of these vacation styles. Do you have translucent powder? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Pro tip. You need this. But I could have it. It's going to have you glistening all night, sis. All night. Okay, get into the fit. Yes. She's taking it, honey. She's taking it.
y'all. I am tired, okay? Mom's night out. Girl's night out was lit. But now I'm home. And I realized I didn't finish my advice portion of this vlog. I was supposed to be giving y'all gems and letting y'all know about my teeth journey. Because earlier we talked about the LASIK. We talked about laser eye surgery. And then I wanted to tell y'all my journey of perfecting my smile. But it's not giving that. It's... <laughs> Jeremiah's sitting here looking at me like, you need to go to bed. I'm about three espresso martinis in right now. And uh, we also had some champagne. So I I'm going to go ahead and take it down. And I'm going to uh, come back tomorrow to finish this vlog, okay? Hi, beautiful. We are back. And today is actually two days after <laughs> y'all saw me out with my girls that night. I had all intentions of waking up the next morning and continuing this vlog after we came from church. But... I don't know y'all, I was just not in the mood to do anything. You ever have those days where you just wanna sit down, like put your feet up, don't nobody call you, text you, bother you, leave me alone. I call those do not disturb days and I have them at least two, three times a month. So that was definitely a do not disturb day. 10 out of 10 recommend. I got to relax. Jeremiah took Gigi to the kids museum so the whole house was just quiet and peaceful and whew, I feel refreshed. <laughs> I feel so much better. Um, and also just going out now, I feel like it takes a lot out of me because I have to get ready and I shot content that whole day. So getting myself prepared, you know, to be out all night and then going to be out all night, it's just a lot. But I'm so glad I got to do it. Y'all know how I feel about time with your community, you know, your sister, your friends, just making sure you make that time to continue your bonds. It is so important. So having a mom's night out, okay, it's a requirement at this point for me to function. I don't do it all the time, but at least once a month, me and my girls gotta get together. All right, so now today's agenda, I do wanna finish talking to you about my postpartum glow up journey. I believe we've already covered uh, the body. Mm -hmm. We covered hair, we covered my brows, uh, we covered skincare. What else? Oh, we just talked about LASIK eye surgery and then I still wanna talk to you about my Invisalign, but first, I need to work out because mm, this past weekend, I don't know, it was I was slacking. So I'm gonna do a quick, just a 30 minute workout, get my blood pumping. I think I'll just do a high incline walk on the treadmill. And I don't know if I've already said this to y'all, but it, I'm telling you, it will change your life. Put your treadmill on the highest incline. Ours only goes up to, I think 12, but if you can get yours up, like if you have a treadmill or have access to a treadmill that goes up to 15, put it on 15 and do 30 minutes high intensity cardio. I'm telling you, it's gonna change the game. It's gonna get your waist snatched, gonna keep your legs toned. And I'm working on that because my cellulite has been peaking a little bit, okay? But yeah, after that, uh, Marlene just dropped off some more PR packages so we get to open up some gifts. And then, what else do I have to do? Oh, I have editing to do, but I, when do I not have editing to do? Child, I'm always posting Instagram Reels and TikToks and YouTube Shorts, so editing is just always on the to-do list. But yeah, I'm gonna work out, open the PR gifts. Oh, and I also got some packages from Amazon I need to open, so I figured I might as well open them during my vlog, show you what I got. Um, and a couple of things that are new in my closet. And then we will talk about the teeth, all right? Let's do it. that shower was everything mind you I was only supposed to be doing my high incline walk for I think 30 minutes is what I initially said and child I just got in the zone you know when you just be working out and you just laser focus and you're going and you're going and I ended up staying on there for an hour and 15 minutes I'm not complaining though I love that for me uh, my goal is this time to keep the weight off I mean it's not like I had a lot of excessive weight but I just felt like mm, my clothes were starting to fit real snug and I was getting a little too close to 200 pounds and that's just not a healthy weight for me. And this is of course not saying anything wrong, you know, for, for you all watching this because everyone's body is different. Like I know girls who are <laughs> over 200 pounds and you can't even tell because the way they carry it. Also your height has something to do with it, you know, 
just the way your body carries weight period so i don't want to make it seem like 200 pounds is a bad thing because it's not but for me being five foot six 200 pounds it just was not conducive for my health you know what i'm saying my goal is to continue to keep the weight off i would love to stay in this range of like 165 to 172 ish pounds and that's contingent upon you know me building more muscle as i you know get back into weightlifting but anyway i just want to encourage you because i know it's i know it's not easy i know it's hard just working out in general whether you're lifting weights trying to do cardio or some new activity you know there's so many things going on pilates kickboxing yoga there's just all these things whatever it is that you choose to do i hope that you can push through it and learn to love it like it and even if you don't it's okay because honestly i would say i like working out but i don't i don't think i like working out i think i just like the results i, I like the way i feel the way it makes me look you know I, I feel better i look better my clothes fit better but the actual like art of working out i'm not sure if i'll ever like it and that's okay <laughs> um you don't have to like something you, you just need the discipline so that that's my message to you you may never love it you may never like it but baby if you love to stay disciplined if you like to stay consistent then you're gonna conquer it okay so anyways let's talk about teeth <laughs> because baby this journey let me tell you my glow up journey has been amazing but the best part well one of the best parts i would say yeah because lasik is probably my top one but fixing my teeth mm, i just feel like it changed the game my smile now it just elevates my whole look all right so i started invisalign in december of 2022 and as you can see here on the screen, child, it wasn't too bad to the point where I needed to wear Invisalign forever. Like, I know that you have a lot of alignment issues and you know a bigger gap and your teeth are crooked and other things. You'll probably be quoted to wear Invisalign for maybe a year and a half, maybe two years. But for me, I was quoted that I would only need 10 trays. And you wear each tray for two weeks. So you can do the math on that. However, I didn't, finished my Invisalign in the allotted time I was supposed to. I kind of went over my time because I wasn't following directions. So if you're not aware, for those of you who are thinking about doing any type of tray alignment, like there's Invisalign, there's something called Bite, there's a bunch of different ones. I think there's Smile Direct or something, I don't know. Whatever you're thinking about, if it has to do with trays, please know that you need to keep them trays in, baby. You need to make sure that you are not just popping them out and forgetting to put them back in. So for me, I'm a chubby girl at heart. Y'all know I like to eat. So I was taking them out to snack and snack and snack and I had to cut back on that eventually because what I realized was I'm messing up the time that I'm supposed to be wearing them each day. So you're not supposed to take your Invisalign out for more than I think it's two to three hours a day. And if you count the amount of time that you're supposed to sleep each day, it's not that bad. But realistically, you're only supposed to take it out when you're eating. That's it. And for me, <laughs> Maybe I like to eat, like I said. So I would take it out and then, oh, I'm probably gonna have a little snack in another hour, so I'm just gonna keep them out. I'll put them back in later. Oh, well, mm, let me just wait. Oh, I don't feel like putting them back in. I was doing a lot. So the first couple of months, I was not following directions. And let me tell you, that's gonna prolong your time because you need to keep the trays in. But once I got serious about my missing line and keeping them in and, and really minimizing the time I was eating, like instead of just running my mouth eating, taking two hours, I would try to eat my meal as efficiently as possible and try to limit, you know, maybe 30 minutes at a time of me taking them out. That helped tremendously to speed up my process. Then from there, once I was finished with my Invisalign, I loved my smile, everything looked great. However, I wasn't fully satisfied because of a couple of things. So number one, I knew that I needed a phrenectomy. Well, I didn't know, but once my dentist told me, I was like, okay, I have to get this. So the phrenectomy is the removal of that thick gum tissue that's in between your gap. For a lot of people, they have sometimes like it hangs down and it's super thick. Mine wasn't too bad, but I needed to get it removed. So the issue with this is that it can cause restriction of movement with your lip and when you're talking. And also this is a hereditary issue. And I just realized when I went to Gigi's last dentist appointment that she has it too. Um, so that's something, fun fact, if you're not sure, oh, is this running in my family? Nine times out of 10, if you have this thick tissue here, it, it runs in your family. So for me, I was unable to pick up my top lip. Like I can do it now freely, but I had tissue that was so thick, not just the tissue that was between my gap, but also literally the tissue that was holding in place my lip to this top area. It was, and you know what I'm talking about if you have it, but if you don't, 
it's like a thick strip of gum tissue and it's super thick and some people have it on the bottom too but i only had it at the top so i needed that removed so i can have more free range of movement with my mouth and also it would better my chances of my gap not coming back as quickly because even with invisalign after you you know get your teeth aligned perfectly everything is nice and straight and your gap is closed your gap can come back because your teeth can shift which is why you gotta wear your retainer every single night as y'all can see from my past vlogs i'm always taking out my retainer in the morning i do not play about wearing my retainer i spent too much time invested money into my smile i cannot afford for my gap to come back so yeah after my invisalign was over i got the phrenectomy and this process was not painful at all they put like a cream first to numb the area um like your upper gum or wherever you know they're gonna do the phrenectomy and for me it was just the top they put this cream there and then they went in with these giant needles okay and they numb the entire area and you can't feel the pain or anything from the needle but you do feel like a mm, like a slight pressure poke if that makes sense so they put a lot of uh, whatever the medicine is into numb the area like the needle is super long and they push it all the way down and then from there they like shake your lip and kind of let it sit in they wait and they wait and then once you're completely numb because that's important to say they don't just hop in and start doing any procedure no they wait they test it out make sure you're completely numb then they go in with a laser now there's two ways this can be done the old school way is they use i don't know a scalpel or some type of tool to cut it but the new school way is to use a laser it's better for the skin it's better for the healing process of the gums i mean i love this experience because again it was painless my healing and downtime wasn't that long afterwards you could see like my gums were a little um not inflamed but you could tell like okay she had something done because it was like a little red but it only took a couple of days for it to clear up and he also in addition to doing the phrenectomy he did some gum contouring and that's to help to expose more of your teeth and make it even going across because sometimes you may think when you see people or even yourself that you have little teeth i promise you you don't uh, your teeth are normal size like your teeth are pretty long they go all the way up but the amount of your teeth that are exposed depends on your gums so if you're thinking about uh, getting Invisalign definitely look into gum contouring because it can help to make your smile more even as they raise the gum with the laser it just makes it more aesthetically pleasing because then all of your teeth look around the same size now this is where it gets tricky because I definitely could have stopped as you can see here on the screen my teeth look really good after the phrenectomy was done after the gum contouring everything looked great i could have stopped right there but what i realized was the shape of my front teeth weren't really giving the aesthetically pleasing look i was going for so what he had to do was add like a resin composite to the bottom of my teeth to give it that more square shape and that was super cute loved it i love that my teeth look more full like my smile going across just looked again more aesthetically pleasing but what I realized was the resin was going to stain. And y'all know I don't do nothing without coffee in the morning, okay? So that's number one. Also, I married a Haitian man, baby. We be eating. So we love curry. We love a lot of staining food. And even if you're not a big curry lover, if you like staining fruits like uh, blackberries and blueberries, you know, things that will tend to stick to the enamel of your teeth and make the color darker, you might want to consider this because I thought that the resin was just gonna fix my problem. I mean, it made the shape of my teeth look so much better. But then he's like, yeah, by the way, you can't whiten resin. Like, it's gonna stain and that's it. So I'm like, wait a minute. This is a short-term solution because I thought I could just get teeth whitening and be good. No, I was wrong. <laughs> if I got my teeth whitened, the resin would have stayed the same color. And again, the resin was just for the bottom part. Like the bottom of my front teeth, the way they were shaped and the, they curved, it looked like small gaps on the bottom. I just didn't like that. So this is why, well, one of the reasons I decided to get veneers, of course, I did not need it. I mean, y'all, just before you say something in the comments, because people always tell me like, oh, you didn't need veneers. Your smile was perfect, blah, blah, blah. Listen, it's a lot of things we don't need, okay? I don't need to wear makeup. I don't need to put on fake lashes. Like all of this is just an extra elevation of my look. And I love that for me. And you should love that for yourself too. Whatever you decide to get is your business. So once again, I knew that I did not want to keep whitening my teeth. I mean, it's not like it hurt because I never had like sensitive teeth. I know for my husband, when he started getting um, teeth whitening, he said he could feel like 
like if it was a it was a random strong breeze like a wind blowing in his teeth when there like nothing was happening like his mouth was closed but he would randomly feel like like it was windy outside and he could i don't know the way he explained it was like you bit into ice cream and the wind started blowing i don't know i don't have sensitive teeth but maybe you out there you understand what he was saying but that never happened to me but i felt like you know what if i keep whitening my teeth like this all the time i might start to get sensitive teeth and i did not want that so again I did not need to get veneers, but I'm so glad it did because it changed the game for me. I feel like my smile is just more aesthetically pleasing. I feel like my teeth look more full on both sides. Before, I felt like the teeth over here just, I don't know, I didn't like the shape of them. And of course now my gap is gone thanks to Invisalign, but I feel like I have a fuller smile in general. And I do have to continue wearing my retainer, let me say this. That's because even with the phrenectomy, there is a chance that my gap can come back. There is a chance that my teeth will shift back into their original place. And that's just how it is when you get Invisalign or any type of braces. So if you're wondering, is Invisalign right for you or is veneers right for you? That's a conversation you have to have with your dentist, first of all. But for me, it was the best choice and I love my results. Let me know in the comments, are you thinking about getting Invisalign or braces? Are you thinking about doing veneers? Um, let me know what questions you have. Would love to answer it for you. And in the meantime, I do need to go open up these PR boxes and the Amazon box I told y'all about. But anyway, I just had to tell you about that part of my glow up process because it was something that I had been wanting to do for a very long time. And not just to close my gap, but to make sure my teeth were all perfectly aligned. And also, I forgot to mention this, getting my teeth aligned before Invisalign was so important because I used to grind my teeth really bad. And making sure that your alignment is fixed first will help you to not have to have issues with grinding your teeth later on. Now, do I still grind my teeth? Yes, slightly, but it's much better than it was before. Like I used to wake up with migraines and headaches because I grinded my teeth so bad. But now I do still grind them a little bit. However, I don't feel the effects of grinding them because I wear a retainer every night. And you can also wear a mouth guard or get a custom mouth guard made, but if you wear retainers, you don't have to worry about it. That was a big part of my postpartum glow up journey that I got to check off the list. I'm so happy. Happy. It was a long process from the start of Invisalign to getting the phrenectomy uh, to then going and getting veneers. Child, we're talking about a whole year and some change, but it was worth it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. All right. And now we got to open up these packages. Let's go see what we got. it is time for me to go to bed thank you so much for tuning into this week's vlog don't forget to leave a comment let me know what questions you have about my postpartum glow up journey any of the procedures that i've had done in part one or part two let me know because y'all know i'll be in the comments answering questions and if i can't answer it in the comments because maybe it's too long of an answer i will be sure to address it in a future vlog okay thank you so much for watching and don't forget to follow me over on instagram at shaynicole.xo follow me on tiktok shaynicolexo and subscribe to this channel right here. Love y'all. Good night.